Hi everyone. So today we're going to look at topic nine, Redox Processing. I hope you guys had the opportunity last week to look at your optional chapter. Uh, pick the one you like. Pick the one that interests you. I'm sure a lot of you will pick biochemistry. I don't know. I just got a feeling you guys, a lot of you, like biochemistry. Well, hey, let's take a look at topic nine. Redox processing. Now, this topic is divided into two sections. Today, 9.1. We're going to look at a third of this part of 9.1. We're going to define what are oxidation reaction and what are reduction reaction. All right. Um, I hope you guys downloaded this. So make sure you go into my Google Classroom and download this PowerPoint. Okay. Print it if you like. I would suggest you to print it or have something to write with because we're, we'll be doing things together. And we're gonna be writing something instead of just listening to me and what I have to show you. So let's go, let's start. So if you, if, in chemistry, there's three main types of reaction. We actually already looked at the first two. The first one was acid and base reaction in chapter eight, neutralization reaction. The second type of important reaction are those double displacement reaction that forms a precipitate. You know, the one we have to look into the solubility table to see if something is insoluble and if one of the participants was insoluble, we said that this reaction forms a precipitate. That's the second type of important reaction. Now the third type of reaction is called redox reaction. Huh. What a redox reaction? Well, redox reaction involves two processes, reduction and oxidation. You get it? Redox coming from reduction and oxidation. Yeah, 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 whatever. I have an example right here. Okay, I have an example right there. It's a synthesis reaction. You guys are familiar with this reaction because I'm, I probably asked you to predict the product of this reaction before. Now, this reaction is a classic example of a redox reaction because there's redu reduction involved and there's oxidation involved. Now, you may be thinking, how do, we, how do I know? Well, first, let's take a look at what reduction means and what oxidation means. Oxidation, what is that? Just two definitions, okay? Number one, when you're combining a chemical with oxygen gas, that's an oxidation reaction. Like calcium reacting with oxygen gas to become calcium oxide. That's an oxidation because you're taking oxygen and you're putting it into calcium. Hey, take a look at the next reaction. We can see that that's, that's a combustion reaction. Again, you're taking oxygen and you're reacting it with methane. Again, combining with oxygen. Oxidation. Simple, huh? Now. The second definition is not as simple. And it's also something we're gonna spend a lot of time today looking into. Loss of electron, losing electron. Now, keep in mind, electrons are negatively charged. I hope you already knew that. I'm confident that you knew that. So you're losing negative charge. You're losing negativity. That's oxidation. What about reduction? What are reductions? Well, three things, three popular thing actually. Reduction is the removal of oxygen. Like for example, nickel to oxide. If you react this with carbon, nickel will lose the oxygen to carbon. So nickel to oxide, becomes just solid nickel. It got reduced. Oxygen was removed. 
Now, second definition, gain of hydrogen, gaining hydrogen gas. Take a look at my example here. Oh, this example is pretty good. It's one of those organic reactions that we're going to look at in Chapter 10. Here's ethyne reacting with hydrogen gas. So hydrogen went on to become part of ethyne to give you ethene. That's a reduction. We say that ethyne got reduced. Now, we saw with oxidation is the loss of electron. Reduction will be the opposite. It will be the gain of electron, gaining of a negative charge. Okay. Let's take a look at an example. Let's go back to our synthesis reaction with mag of magnesium and oxygen gas. Now, before we begin, let's see if we can just fill in this blank. So in this reaction, Magnesium will what electrons to become magnesium ion? Did, did I lose electron to do that or did I gain electron to do that? Hey, I went from neutral to positive. Oh, I must have lost electron to achieve that. In fact, I lost two electrons to achieve that. What about oxygen? Oxygen will become oxygen anion from neutral to an anion. I can only gain an electron to accomplish that. In fact, I gain two electrons to accomplish that. Okay. So let's take a look at a summary. Oxidation can be said, gain of oxygen, loss of hydrogen, which we didn't really see, loss of electron, which is very, very important, and this thing right here called oxidation state increases. Now, we'll see what that means. We'll see what that means later. Reduction, loss of oxygen, gain of hydrogen, Gaining electron, I'm going to put a star here, with, you know, that's important, and decreases of oxidation state. Okay. On the next slide, we'll take a look at what are oxidation states and how do you determine a chemical's oxidation states. Now, the reason why I have an asterisk here is because losing electron and gaining electron is really the heart of electrochemistry. I have a little memory device for you guys, huh? It says, Leo the lion goes grrr. So silly. What is that? Loss of electron is oxidation. Gain of electron, uh, that's reduction. You see? So, Leo the lion's goes grr, loss of electron is oxidation, gain of electron is reduction. So, if you forget, hopefully you remember Leo. So, oxidation state, okay? There are four ways. This should be a four. How to determine oxidation state. Now, this is new, so bear with me here. If you're being asked, what is the oxidation state or oxidation number for any elemental form? Now, what are elemental form? Metal on its own is an elemental form. Gases, those diatomic gases, they're in elemental form. 
If somebody were to ask you, what is the elemental form of these atoms? They're zero. So sodium is zero. Oxygen gas is zero. Hydrogen gas is zero. Okay, P4 is zero. If somebody would ask you, what is N2? Oh, that's zero. What about iron? Iron on its own. Oh, that's zero. Copper? Oh, that's zero. My favorite, coal? Oh, that's zero. Okay, F2. Fluorine gas? That's zero. Because these are all elemental forms. Number two. Any monoatomic ion. All right, they will have an oxidation number of what their regular charges are. Now, some of them are quite simple. We all know that group one metal, like sodium ion, they're all going to be plus one. Okay, we saw calcium ion being plus two. Zinc. is plus two. So you can find this information on the periodic table. Now, I do have a periodic table up on Google Classroom, which you can download in case you forgot, uh, in, in case you don't have yours. But I'm sure you can find that information anywhere nowadays. All right. Now, oxygen, this one is important. Okay. Because there's going to be a lot of examples we're going to look at today that involves oxygen. Oxygen as an ion will be negative 2. All right. Now, don't mistake an oxygen ion with O2. O2, like here, is 0. But O with a negative 2 charge, that is negative 2. Now, number 3 and 4. I, I think that's the most important part here. Okay. For neutral compounds. Like, for example, water. Water is a neutral compound. Why? Because it doesn't have an overall charge. The oxidation number for this whole thing is zero. Carbon dioxide. Ooh, carbon dioxide. Zero. Because it doesn't have an overall charge. Sodium chloride. Zero overall. All right. Now, number four. What about those compounds that are that we call it polyatomic ion? They have a charge on it. So what's the oxidation number for these guys? Now for sulfate, this is sulfate. The oxidation number for sulfate will be negative two. Phosphate, negative 3. Ammonium, positive 1. Okay. Now, there's one that I'm going to put on top that I'm going to put in blue. Do you remember this guy? Peroxide. Hopefully you remembered him. Peroxide is negative one. That's an exception. Okay, keep that in mind. Peroxide, whenever you detect one, is negative one. Make sure you keep that in mind. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at what are we going to do with all of this information. All right. Problem one. Determine the oxidation state of each element in the following compounds. Okay, how are we going to do this? Now, the first compound here is P2O5, diphosphorus pentaoxide. oxide. The problem is phosphorus. Oxygen is never a problem. Oxygen is never ever a problem. Because oxygen is always negative 2. That's not going to change. Have you seen a negative 3 oxygen? No. It's always going to be negative 2. Now, the problem is phosphorus. What is phosphorus? Now, for these 
I guess, um, binary compound. That's very simple to do. And we probably have done something like this before. P2O5, what is the charge for phosphorus? Well, remember D crossing? Right? If the anion is at its correct charge, which it is, then a cation is also in its correct charge. So what does that mean? Hey, that means phosphorus is plus five. Okay. That's pretty simple, isn't it? You can do the same thing with a second example. NaH. Okay. Decross the numbers. We can see that Na is positive 1. H is negative 1. Right? Now, whenever H is bonded to a metal, H, most of the time, is that is negative ionic state. His oxidation number is, is most likely negative if he's bonded to a metal. Oh, the third one is interesting because you can't really decross to find out the third one, can't you? Because you're not going to say chromium is plus seven because it's not. Now, take a look at how I'm going to do this, okay? Follow very closely in terms of how I'm going to do this. Chromium, oh, dichromium heptaoxide. This is a polyatomic ion with a negative two charge. I shouldn't even call it dichromium heptoxide. There's no such thing. Just made that up. Now, how are we going to do this? Now, oxygen is not a problem. Oxygen is never a problem. Oxygen is always negative two. The problem is chromium. Now, this is how you're going to find out what the answer is. So watch very carefully in terms of the mathematics here. We have two chromium. So let's say chromium is X. Okay, chromium is X. X is the oxidation number of chromium that we want to find out. And there's two chromium. So we say two X. Right? This chromium is bonded to an oxygen. And how many oxygen there are? Well, we're gonna add seven of these oxygen and each oxygen has a charge or an oxidation number of negative two. All right, so let's go back and take a look. Two X is because there's two chromium and we set chromium to have to be X. This seven came from seven oxygen and oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two. Right. I'll do more examples so you guys all know. Now, Cr207 is not a neutral compound. It has a charge, it has an overall charge of negative two. So we say 2x plus 7 times negative 2 is equal to negative 2. Now, I'm sure you guys are great at math. x, in this case, is 6. What does that mean? And that means answer. Chromium is positive 6 in terms of its oxidation number. All right. Sometimes it can be quite simple. Sometimes, of course, it can be very difficult. We'll do a few more examples. That way you guys are at least comfortable in terms of how to do this. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Tin 4 bromide. All right, tin 4 bromide. Again, this is one of those that you can do D cross. So tin is going to be plus four. 
bromine is going to be negative 1. Now, let's say, uh, can I use that same method we used for, for question 3 to do this? The answer is yes, certainly. Because we all know what bromine is. Bromine is always negative 1. It's a halogen. So, if you take X, which represents the oxidation state of 10, and you add that to 4 times negative 1, because there's 4 bromine here, and the overall charge of this compound is neutral, so we're going to make that 0. Hey, take a look. X is plus 4. Just like what we said before when we decross. So it worked. It's just that for a binary compound, why go through so much work? Especially when the overall charge of this compound is neutral. Now, the next example, you have to use this mathematical method. All right? Hydrogen chlorate. Uh, Hydrogen perchlorate, sorry. Now, oxygen is negative 2. That's a given. Hydrogen. Now, hydrogen in this case is not bonded to a metal. Because he's not bonded to a metal, he's going to be a positive 1. The kicker here is chlorine. Now, you may be asking, well, bromine is my negative 1. Will chlorine be negative 1? Well, not exactly. Okay? The one before, you're straight up metal bromide. So bromine will be negative 1. But in this case, you're looking at chlor perchlorate. Chlorine is not negative 1. Okay? Oxygen is negative 2. Oxygen is always negative 2. Hydrogen always positive 1 in this case, but chlorine is not negative 1. We have to find out what chlorine is. What's the oxygen oxidation state of chlorine? Hey, let's find out. Okay, hydrogen is positive 1. Okay, chlorine, let's call him X. Oxygen is, there's four of them, so four times negative 2. Is this neutral? Well, yes it is. So it's going to be equal to 0. Well, I'm sure you guys are expert in doing this. X in this case is 7. Okay? So chlorine gotta be plus 7 alright so I'll do one more and then maybe I'll leave the bottom actually you know what? I'll just do this whole page I have the next page where you guys can do a whole lot so let me just finish this NO2 this thing has an overall negative 1 charge oxygen again Negative 2. So this is going to be x plus 2 times negative 2 equal to negative 1. Okay? Because nitrite is not no neutral um, polyatomic ion. Here, you can see that x is equal to 3. Okay? Nitrogen is a plus 3. Nitrogen. The next question. N2. Uh, I hope you guys don't have to think a lot about this one. It's going to be zero. It's diatomic. It has to be zero. All right. Calcium nitrate. All right. Again, O is negative 2, calcium plus 2. Okay, calcium doesn't have any other charge other being plus 2. Nitrogen is the one that we have to figure it out. So for this one, make sure 
when you count atoms, you're counting it right. So I have two plus nitrogen. There are two nitrogen here. 2x plus oxygen. There are six oxygen here. And each of them is worth negative two. This whole thing is neutral. X is five. Nitrogen has a plus five oxidation state. All right. Oh my, my, my. What are we gonna do here? Now, if you think this is barium oxide, uh, I'm sorry. This is actually a peroxide. Only peroxide where you can have BaO2. Now, hopefully you remember what we said here. The oxygen state, the oxidation state for peroxides are always negative one. Okay, something to remember. Barium plus two. Can't be anything else. I hope this helps. Okay, I hope you guys get it by looking through these example. If you don't, hey, you can always rewind back and take a look at what I just said. Or, hey, do you guys know my office hours? Um, um, I'll write this down on Google Classroom. For Monday to Wednesday, my office hour is between 1 to 2. And for Thursday and Friday, it'll be 11 to 12. Okay, email me questions. Uh, I guess you can even find me in Google Classroom. There's a messenger there, I think. Can you just ask me anything. All right, I want you guys to do this one, okay? Basically, you're asked to find X. He's X, okay? What are these? They're oxidation states for the element on the left. Like, for example, this guy. Let me do this guy with you. I want to know what is the oxidation number for arsenic. So let's take a look at this. Okay, and then you guys do the rest. Hydrogen is always plus one. Okay, oxygen is always negative two. So let's put this together. So there's three hydrogen and they're all plus one each. Arsenic, oh, well, there's only one arsenic. So just X and oxygen, just three of them. Each of them worth negative two. Put that all together. X is equal to positive three. So AS has an oxidation state of positive three. Okay, now for the last question here, treat these guys as one entity, okay? Treat ammonium being plus one, and there's two of them. Treat water as zero, okay? Treat sulfate negative two, there's two of them, and you'll find out what Fe is once you when when you do the math. Alright. So ask me if you have any questions. Let's move on to the last part of what we're gonna do today and then uh, we'll continue on tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. By looking how to balance some of these redox reaction. So let's take a look at what problem three said. What is the ox what is oxidizing and what is reducing in this reaction? Now, in this reaction we have magnesium reacting with two moles of hydrogen uh, hydrochloric acid 
to give you magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Single displacement reaction, also a redox reaction. So what is being oxidized here and what are being reduced? So remember Leo the Lion's Goldger? Let's assign everybody their oxidation number. Let me do that in blue. Magnesium, being an elemental form, has an oxidation number of zero. Hydrogen is plus one. Chlorine is negative one. We can do that by decrossing. Same with magnesium chloride. Magnesium plus two. Chloride, negative one. Hydrogen gas, well, zero, of course, because again, elemental form. So, who got oxidized and who got reduced? Well, take a look at magnesium. Magnesium went from zero to plus two. So it started with neutral and then went on to become positive. Looks like a loss electron. Loss of electron, that's Leo. That's oxidation. Wow. Now, hydrogen. Hydrogen started off as plus one. Okay, start off plus one. And it went on to become zero. So from plus one to zero, you must have gained electron to do that. Gain of electron is GER. There's your reduction. You see? Now what about chlorine? Well, chlorine went from negative one to negative one, so uh, nothing really happened here. Okay. So you see how this is a redox reaction? You have somebody oxidizing and you have somebody reducing. There's your redox. Okay. Now I have two questions down there. What is the oxidizing agent? Now, what are what is oxidizing agent? Well, oxidizing agent in this case is HCl. Why? Because HCl caused magnesium to oxidize. So the oxidizing agent is what caused something to oxidize. Magnesium oxidize. HCl caused that to happen. Reducing agent is the opposite. Magnesium is the reducing agent because magnesium caused hydrogen to reduce. All right? So hopefully you don't mistake in the four words here, oxidizing, reducing, oxidizing agent, and reducing agent. Let's just make sure you clear that up. All right, one more question, and then I and then I don't want to. I have nothing else to say. Actually, you know what? Let me do the first one, and you do the second one. How's that sound? So, let's take a look at the top reaction: who oxidized, and who got reduced. All right. So, mercury here is two plus plus two. Okay. Nitrogen, if you do the math like we did earlier, you'll notice that nitrogen is actually plus two. Hydrogen is negative one. Now, mercury, as is elemental form, is zero. Nitrogen in its elemental form, also zero. Hydrogen plus one, okay? I'm sure right now you can assign who got oxidized and who got reduced. We can see very clearly, mercury went from plus two to zero. You gain electron for that to happen, so that's reduced. 
Now we also saw something else being reduced and that's nitrogen. Nitrogen also got reduced. It went from positive two to zero as well. So that's reduced. Do we have any oxidized here? Of course we do. Hydrogen went from negative one to positive one. You must have lost electron. You lost two electrons for that to happen. That's oxidized. Okay, so the trick here is find out everybody's oxidation number and determine if they lost or gain electron through Leo the Lion Goes Gur to assign who oxidized and who got reduced. I'll leave the second one with you. Okay, might take it up tomorrow. Anyway, uh, let's stop here. I think this is a very good time to stop because the next topic is about balancing redox reaction. That's not like balancing regular reaction, I'm telling you. Balancing redox reaction is a lot of work. So let's stop here, and we'll reconvene on Wednesday.